presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. This is awesome. Uh, come on, Tarle Vu. We're going over to Paris. What's happening? Hey, Tom. It's Adam from Paris. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, Adam. Yourself? That's good. Long time no talk. I appreciate everything you've done for me and my family over the years. So, well, we uh, appreciate you growling on problem with us. Yeah, 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 sir. I've done gold or and all the softwares and all your books and read a generational thank you. you are, seminars, thank so you so much. Appreciate it. Yes, yeah, sir. Now, Tom O'Brien. What is going on, Tigers? This is Jacob filling in for Tom. I'll be with you tomorrow as well. So for the past week and a little bit of change, we've had all the major indices going down uh, quite a bit here. Look on the weekly with the uh, Dow futures, the S futures, NQs. I mean, you guys have been trading. You've seen what's going on with all this. Today we have uh, Tim Ord coming on, and he'll be uh, discussing a little bit about the uh, future outlook for the SPX. Uh, let's take a look. We have the NQs down almost about 1%. We have the ES, uh, the futures down about 0.66. YM about the same as well. Our bonds are going down, the interest rate's going up on them. This is getting into a really strange zone where we have a, uh, a high growth, high interest rate environment. And we'll take a look at that too. The Atlanta Fed is uh, suggesting there might be, or at least projecting there might be a 6% GDP growth for the third quarter. Uh, gold on its way down to that 1900 uh, level, down about uh, half a percent today. Silver up a little bit. And then copper as well. Copper's been doing uh, somewhat decently, especially with concepts of the uh, of an impending recession, although those seem to be easing a little bit, at least in the mind of uh, larger profile wealth managers. Uh, Q's obviously down. Spy Tesla down 2.2%, Meta down 2.28, Google up um, really about flat. Disney, this has been such a shame, um, mainly because I was an investor in them. Uh, but they've gotten slaughtered with everything going on. I know uh, DeSantis was asking for them to kind of stop um, pushing back uh, against his change on their, uh, what do they have? Basically the special privileges that they possess for such a long time. He said they're not coming back. Uh, furthermore, they closed the Star Wars overnight kind of uh, project that they had. It was very expensive. A lot of the times when you see some of these larger companies you know, leaning out a little bit when they cut different features or experiences, the market tends to really like that. We see that with Meta as well. Um, it seems like I was just talking about this in the office maybe last week. Um, you know, when they cut plans for the metaverse, their stock skyrocketed. They just cut something recently where they um, ha had some AI essentially uh, with different medical compounds and they cut that as well. Uh, and the uh, stock skyrocketed again. Because the idea is, you know, you're freeing up cash to do more things. And for whatever reason, and a lot of this might be political as well, uh, Disney, even though they're cutting some of their expenditures, uh, kind of continue to go down a little bit. So we'll see what kind of goes out there. They're, they're nearing that March 2020 low. Right around here. So, I mean, that's pretty significant as well. I mean, so that's down from pre-COVID levels that they're trading at currently. We're looking at copper a bit. Uh, Southern Copper has done quite well also. Let's get out of the five year. We just take a look at this on a year to date. I mean, we're trading, you know, from the beginning of the year, we're at that 72 level right around here. Dip down on some pretty significant volume down to 64. And then we had some private equity groups buying copper and some other people as well. Remember, uh, maybe a month ago when I was on the show, was talking about the potential for copper uh, to go up to prices like this. Um, or at least some certain companies as uh, it's getting a little bit more difficult to find it and uh, it's in greater demand as time goes on. Of course, we get a little bit of retest on the last day with volume here, um, but it seems like it might be, we'll see what happens today. Let's take a look on the daily. Yeah, we're sort of down on, you know, trading sideways on some volume. We'll see how Southern Copper pans out, but it was an interesting buy and if you got in around that time about a month ago, not a bad uh, purchase. Steel Dynamics, I've been watching this um, very closely. 
that's not what I want to look at. It was constantly testing these levels. These were the high volume levels. Obviously, it broke down a little bit and kind of traversed down to the 90 mark. They came right back, again, on high volume, rejecting this area here, and just trading into this bounds of 100 and 110. Usually when you have a stock that's testing these high volume kind of bottoms and it rejects it on low volume, that might be setting up for a movement down. We had some high volume on the up end here on the close. So we'll see if it really wants to test this 110. If we can break through with some decent volume, we might be kind of making a new little zone to be trading into. Hawaiian Electric. So this company supplies about 95% of power. Obviously, Hawaii, I think it's Maui, uh, experienced some pretty catastrophic fires. And this is traded down pretty significantly, right? They almost have, I mean, I would say a monopoly, right, at 95%, uh, supplying energy to Hawaii. Uh, there's been some talk, you know, do we buy at these levels? Is this oversold, right? There's some lawsuits coming out. Um, against them. I, I'm not sure how well that stands up in court. And I was trying to find other examples, you know, from California, at least, were there any lawsuits taken out against electric companies for not doing enough during fires? Uh, I was not really able to find much data. But what I did find is some of the larger electric uh, companies in California, it took about 11 months for them to really reach the true bottom uh, from, you know, the, the pre-fire uh, kind of price. And so, you know, this is obviously an insane sell-off. Just today you had a 23% decrease uh, down from this massive gap. And what I would say to that, you know, is a new company going to come in and ever get a foothold when Hawaiian Electric had 95% dominance? Probably not, right? However, I am a bit concerned at buying at this level. We still might see again, you know, in California, you had about 11 month period when the largest uh, electric supplier uh, reached its bottom. So buying at this point, you know, you might be still purchasing a falling knife here. So waiting for some time to see kind of how this shakes out, seeing if they're going to get any financial help um, from the mainland. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. But keep your eye on this because, you know, if the recovery efforts are effective and a, and a bit quicker, and let's hope they are, right, uh, this might see a pretty decent bounce back. Um, I was talking uh, with one of my people about uh, Duke Energy. They, they have a pretty big monopoly around uh, where I live, and they're raising their prices. Like, I'm paying an inordinate amount for energy in my apartment, and I'm not really there often. I just run the AC all day. And uh, Duke released, <laughs> it's just interesting to see how these guys kind of operate, right? And all electric companies do this. Uh, they released a statement, and if you call them, they'll say the same thing, that uh, natural gas prices were so high the past two years, so therefore we have to adjust um, our rates. Which is an insane thing because yeah, you had volatility for a short amount of time, but you know, natural gas is at historic lows right now. And I mean, they burn the stuff off uh, where, they, where they extract it. And uh, I, I promise you that Duke Energy will not decrease their rates and I'm sure other electric uh, providers won't either. So they might be worth a look. Um, especially if you're in the South as more people move here and it gets hotter. Folks, stay tuned. We have Tim Ord on next. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN. Educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim is not with us yet. I think he'll be on uh, the next segment. Let's take a look here what I was mentioning um, in the first segment. This is the Atlanta Fed projecting nearly 6% growth in a third quarter. On Tuesday, Atlanta Fed's GDP Now estimate moved up to 5.8% from 5% a day prior after fresh data from the Census Bureau showed housing starts uh, increased 3.9% in June. 5.8% uh, GDP growth number held, it marked the most robust period of economic growth since the fourth quarter of 2021. And it's super interesting, you know, when you, when you have these high rate environments, you know, the Treasury you know, is going to have to pay, the government's going to have to pay kind of the Fed set rate. Um, so, you know, this acts almost in some capacity, or it could in the future, as uh, some kind of, of stimulus in some strange way uh, to where, you know, now we're getting to like a high interest rate and high growth environment. Uh, this upbeat print on the consumer came after recent jobs data showed the economy is still adding jobs while unemployment remains historically low and monthly wage growth has begun to outpace inflation. Uh, providing a potential boost for further consumer spending. You know, kind of on this point as well, like this target for the 2% GDP growth, um, I always found it, to, to me, it seemed somewhat arbitrary. And I, you know, I was really young when this happened, when, but when austerity was kind of in place in Europe, I mean, they, they had that same kind of uh, growth target. And I was always curious why they chose 2%. And maybe a few meetings ago, someone finally asked Powell what it was and if, you know, can we start looking at some of this growth as actually acceptable and anything above 2% not being, you know, needing to be managed, essentially. And uh, the only response he gave was like, no, he's like, we're only going to shoot for 2% and that's it and that'll never change. And uh, it really, you know, you can't help but ask yourself, why is it just at the 2%? Is that the only thing that is at the most manageable level? I'm not sure. Regardless, um, we'll see kind of uh, what happens with that. Definitely a kind of voodoo time for all of this here. Another thing in wireless carriers, and this is being driven by China a lot as well, but also in America, but wireless carriers are losing billions as smartphone demand slows. And a lot of the carriers for so long made it kind of a bit more viable uh, to, to get the newest uh, phone or the newest whatever uh, every month. So anyways, we'll get back to that in a second. Guys, we have Tim Ord on. Tim, can you hear me? Yep, I sure can. How are you doing so, today? 
Good. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. So. Thanks for joining us. Quite a, uh, a trend reversal that's going on, at least in the market. I'm really interested to see what you have to uh, say about all of this and what your analysis that's is. A, yeah, uh, there's a couple of things. That I think the first thing I'd cover is that char uh, chart number six I sent you. Yeah, let's take a look. Yeah, it's just a, it's kind of skipping over some stuff, but um, actually I've been along here. I thought we'd find support around that. Uh, four four, um, I don't know four four five area on the SPYs. I had some actually kind of a panic signals, but we actually fell through that, and we're actually getting down to the early July lows. And if you notice, I circled in blue on the volume chart uh, what that low is tested. We're testing that low right now. Mm. Day's not over, but that low is around eighty million shares, give or take. I don't know. Looks like about July 3rd or 4th, somewhere in that time frame. Right. And usually previous lows, previous highs um, are, you know, depends which way you're going. It was in this particular case, since we're going down, the previous lows are support. And it depends how you test the previous lows. And if you test them on at least 10% lighter volume, uh, that test is going to find support. But if you get pretty much equal volume or higher than the previous low, and a lot of times the market still can bounce, but normally you ultimately will break through those lows because uh, volume is kind of like ener it's energy, really. The sure. more volume you got, the more energy it is. Of course. So as we're putting this update on, we're, we're, we're testing that low right now. Uh, so it, it will hold. I don't know. This is option expiration week, which normally has a bullish bias. And, and this week, obviously, it's not. It's been pretty much straight down all you know, last, uh, the last three days count today will be a third day down right so um if volume does come in say around 72 million shares today or 73 we'll probably find we'll probably see a bounce but once you pass a, below some previous highs we had some previous highs um up around that four four five area and you pass through those highs and now you're testing those kind of previous lows so some sort of a worthwhile top is in and uh, I thought at one point uh, we might go down to uh, uh, 442, which is about another 5, 6, 7% lower uh, over the next several weeks. And this chart's starting to kind of look like that because sure. even though we did get panic in it, we're not bouncing. And so what that tells me, we're going to need more panic before a bounce does occur. So, um, so, so yeah, I mean, if it, if it see, blows past this level here, from you know July fourth or fifth, I mean we have quite a bit more ways to go down, right? Um, until we see a bounce, how how are you looking at that? Well, actually, depends on today, uh, right? You know, since we're testing those previous lows, if volume comes in, say seventy two million shares that vicinity, we're probably going to bounce first. Okay, up to around forty four hundred or four four four. Sure. On the SPYs, uh, and you kind of create a, a right shoulder, probably of a head and shoulders uh, top pattern. That's what I'm thinking could be forming here. It depends, you know, what how the close goes. Looks like right now, you know, doesn't look like it's going to be much of a bounce. And the volume's kind of ticking away here. We're close to, you know, 60 million shares already. So volume to me is at this stage, even though we got about a little over a half hour to go. Um, probably your volume is going to be higher. So uh, I'll have to get out of my long position, kind of regroup and figure out, you know, my next signal. If the market does bounce, do I go short? Or uh, if it's unclear, just stay on the sidelines until it does become clear. So it's kind of August. If, you have, if, you're, five, if you're five months up in a row, normally the six months down. Sure. So we're five months up going into uh, this month. So this month is going to be a down month. How big of a down month, I don't know. Uh, but if the expiration week bounces, which doesn't appear it will be, normally the week after is down pretty big. Now, since this week is not even bouncing, um, I don't know what next week could be. So we'll kind of have to wait and see. But in a bigger scheme of things, I think uh, this is not a major high. Uh, this is a correction and an uptrend. Okay. So this is not not like the end of the world here, right? But some sort of a uh, a pretty decent low um, at much lower levels than we are right now, 
probably back down to uh, 442 on the SPYs, I think, or, where the market could go before this uh, bottom is found. And that could happen later this month or even in September. I see. Uh, so um, we'll have to kind of kind of wait and see. But uh, we're probably due for a bounce, but it's it's there'll be a bounce and a downtrend. So um, we, we can go on a couple other charts and, and uh, Absolutely. look at some. Uh, uh, Still fascinating stuff. And then, Tim, we're about to go to break, but stay with us through it because, you know, anytime you come on, you have, you have great information. I'm, I'm interested to see what you have stored for us in the other charts, all right? All right. Sounds good. Right on. Okay, folks, we'll be right back with Tim Ord. Stay tuned. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. FNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob. We are with Tim Ord. Tim, what are we looking at here on uh, chart one? This is the equity uh, put call ratio index. Yeah, this is a, the bottom window is a, the five-day average of the equity put call ratio readings. And so it's a five-day average, not a single day. And yesterday, we closed at 1.03, which is pretty high. Everybody really jumped on the puts yesterday. On the five-day, if you get around 0.8, which we closed yesterday there, uh, this chart goes back to about mid-2014. And I, with red lines, I, I notified those times 
Mm. Every time that ratio, uh, put call ratio got down to a point eight or higher. And so we hit it yesterday. And so even though we're down a little bit uh, today, we're probably getting close to some sort of a low, at least a sideways consolidation. I don't think the decline's over on the S&Ps, but I think it's, it's probably due for a bounce in here to take some of this uh, put players off off the market. You know, you get too many, in, you get you get you get too many people on one side of the market. You know, everybody buying puts you usually go to the off, of, of course, direction. yeah, right. And so that's kind of what's going on here. Especially this indicator actually has quite a bit of importance during option expiration week because uh, kind of high flyers. You know, there are a lot of gunslingers, I guess you might say. Sure kind of lean on on the puts or the calls during expiration week and and this is one of them they're kind of leaning on right now so i wouldn't be surprised if tomorrow will be an update we'll have to wait and see but um this area is starting to look like at least a short-term bounce at least a consolidation that may last a week or so but not long term um let's, let's flip to chart number two so the equity put call ratio readings are uh, it's kind of a sentiment indicator. Kind of tells you where you are. And chart number two, Marty Zwag come up with this. Um, he's he's passed away, but he come up with a lot of type of different indicators. He was really a master trader back in his day. And the bottom window is the ten day average of the advanced issues divided by total issues. And uh, uh, his indicator when he got below point four. And rallied to point six, which is the bottom window. Right. Uh, that's what the indicators. But does it within ten days? It's a sign of strength, and that's what you want to see coming off of a major low. You got to have a lot of weakness going into a bottom, and right after the bottom, you got to have a sign of strength. And I didn't circle those time of strength in there, but there's a couple of men there. That's what kept me bullish all the way into the top back in July. I got out in July, and. Uh, but anyhow, now we're back down to point four. Uh, the, yesterday's reading was was point three seven, uh, which was the day before readings, and, and yesterday's reading was point four. So we're right in that vicinity that the market's pretty oversold. Right, and you, you put that with uh, the five day average of the equity put call ratio readings. You know, you, you're you got too many people on one side of the fence here. Right, and so uh, and you're also running into the lows of. Uh, of early July, so it wouldn't be surprised you, you get some sort of a bounce, you know, into next week. Then from there, I don't. Then from there, I, I think we could possibly relieve some of the the negativity here, and the market could uh, possibly resume down again. So, um, but yes, there's a couple of different indicators I'm looking at, and I do have another in. I sent you chart number three. Yes, and. Uh, this is what I kind of uh, do. I thought we was going to, that the um, shaded tan areas are gaps, open gaps. And I thought we'd find support at that gap area. Um, the one from the um, uh, mid-July uh, where I have open gap where we filled it. And I, I thought we'd find that. And the reason why, we had quite a bit of panic. Panics, you, know, you got to form a bottom, you have to have panic. And there's a bunch of different reasons, or definitely bunch of different indicators to identify panic and I use the ticks and trend. Usually you get a trend reading above one point two five and down to green below minus two hundred the same day. Majority of the time you're going into a panic of some sort, especially if you get two of them in a row. We actually got three over about a five day period here. Right. And it didn't seem to stop the market, which kind of surprised me a little bit. So and that's the reason why I kind of was long here because I seen panic in the ticks and trend and going into option expiration week to me it looked like the expiration week would be an up week and I'd go for the rally and, and look to get short again. Well, I'm stuck long here. So I gotta figure out if we are gonna start bouncing right here or not. But um normally those ticks and trend readings when you do get a a, a bullish combination of of that you're you're within a day of a or a these usually happen the same days of readings to as late as two days later. Well, we're past two days later on all three of them. So at the moment, they're pushing up the 10-day average of the trend to bullish levels. 
but it, we're not there yet. We're only 1.12 on the 10 day. It needs to be up to around 1.2 or higher. So it's getting there. It's kind of one of the reasons why I don't think this is going to be a big decline of any consequence. It's going to be a decent pullback, but it's not going to be a 10% or down or a 15% or down. It's probably, you know, six or 7% from the highs, which is decent. But, um, um, but, but so, not, you know, so end of the anyhow, world scenario. Pardon? I said, but not like in, you know, end of the world scenario with it. No, huh? it's, it's not. As a matter of fact, when you start hearing Aaron, you know, scenario of the world on the radio and stuff like that, <laughs> chances are you're looking at a major bottom. Right. So, right, right, right. Because cause all <laughs> most of the indicators will be pushed uh, to extreme and, and we're not there. We're kind of, you know, from what I'm hearing on the stuff I'm hearing, they're kind of just almost ignoring the market right now, like no big deal. Sure. But once it gets back in the news, you're, you're probably starting to see where a bottom is starting to form. Sure. So, um, but anyhow, it's, 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 it's kind of a declining market, you know, corrections in an uptrend are always kind of hard because uh, indicators get kind of fluffy. They, you know, when your when your buy indicators start failing and uh, you know you're, you're in a, at least a sideways market, a down market, and if, because of these, you know, trend and tick readings over the last couple of weeks started to fail here, we're, we're no, we're not making a bottom. What that tells me, these trend and trick readings will get a lot higher over the next probably several weeks, uh, where a bottom may come in, say, getting 1.2 on the trend and an uptrend. That's where a bottom forms. You know, we may reach two, maybe two and a half, even three on the trend before the next low will form. That's probably what's coming at us. And you'll see down tick readings instead of two or three or maybe four hundred on the close, you may see minus five, six, seven, eight hundred on the close. So that's probably what's in front of us. So the market is kind of will probably blow out pretty big and that'll be the time uh to really look for a major low. And that's the same what happened um you know, I think it was last year, um or was it two thousand twenty twenty two you know, the trend and ticks were just totally blowing out, and I was buying all, all that low. I was in, and I got pretty close to the low, but, uh, you know, I was a single guy out there. Sure. It, it seemed like taking the orders because <laughs> nobody else was buying. So. Right. Right. Tim, uh, we have another break, but if uh, you want to, I would love if you could stay for the next one. We can go through the rest of the charts here. Uh, really fascinating right. stuff you're talking about. Awesome. Okay, we will do. Awesome. Folks, stay tuned. Uh, we're going to wrap up here with Tim Ord on the next segment. Really fascinating stuff if you're just tuning in. Um, but stay right there, and we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob. We are with Tim Ord. Tim, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Wonderful, wonderful. No. All right. Let's crack into, uh, we can keep going chart Let's three or chart four or five. Yeah, uh, go to chart four. Wonderful. Okay, yeah, right on. All right, so the bottom window is the 50-day um, average of uh, up-down volume percent for the GDX. Mm. And every time it's got down below minus 20, the chart goes back to 2011, or 2000, yeah, 2011. Every time it got down below minus 20, the market flipped sideways. And, it, and even though the market kind of went up and down, up and down, um, the sideways pattern sometimes lasted several weeks, even in a couple of cases, several months. What what I really want to point out on here, every time it went down below minus 20, it always went back above zero at some point. Right. But over the you know, next uh, couple of months or something like that or whatever. So it never went minus 20 uh, and went back down uh Minus 20 again, it always went from minus 20, flip sideways, and ultimately went above zero. Right. So at some point, we're going to, uh, and this has happened one, two, uh, uh, seven times, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, five, no, eight times, or you know, seven times, seven previous times, and all seven previous times, it went above, closed above zero. And when it closes above zero, that's when the uptrend starts on GDX. So at some so point, an uptrend is going to start on a close above zero on GDX. You know, right now, uh, that indicator is minus seven. So it's been minus seven in that range probably for the last couple, three weeks. And, and GDX has kind of gone sideways to down uh, in that time frame. So it's actually it's making lower lows, but this indicator is making much higher lows, even though when minus 20 was hit back in mid-June, uh, GDX a little bit lower, but this indicator is showing a positive divergence. It's went from minus 20 to minus 7. But to, to say that the impulse wave of GDX starts is when this indicator closes above zero. So, and we know it's coming. We just don't know when. Can it set here another week or two and and uh, decay a little bit more on GDX possibly? But once it does give above zero, it usually that's those are all the shaded blue areas. Yes. Uh, sometimes it, they last just a couple of weeks. Sometimes they last several months. So I don't know how long this one will last. But, uh, you know, the the rally is still in front of us, but it hasn't started yet until we get above zero. And we can look at a shorter-term chart on chart number five. You have it right here. Say what? I said we have it right here. Oh, okay, okay, chart number five. And this, okay, the bottom window is the, uh, actually, is advanced decline uh, percent, but it's an 18-day average. And the next higher window is the up-down volume with an 18-day average. And what I'm trying to show here, um, the first uh, box, to, I have a outlined in red back in uh, uh 
May no, February of, to March. of this year. Yeah. And w- what I wanted to show is both those indicators, the, the bottom two indicators, they made higher lows as GDX made lower lows. And if you go into the top, so the red area is when both indicators are below minus 10. And the blue area is when it's above minus 10. So when it's, uh, both indicators are above minus 10, the market's in an uptrend. So anyhow, you rallied out of the May low, had a positive divergence, turned blue, went up to the highs and in, let's in, um, see what date that is. It's well, the May high or the, the April highs. Uh, indicator uh, GDX made higher highs, and both indicators made lower highs and closed below minus 10, and you had a downtrend. And you got back in here um, early July, gave a buy, and kind of actually gave a sell here on the uh, first part of, of August, and it's, and it's still on a sell signal because both those indicators are below minus 10. Right. So both those indicators, even though you got a positive divergence, G. GDX is making lower lows. Both those indicators are making higher lows. But you need to close on both these indicators above minus 10, which will signal before the 50-day average because this is only an 18-day average. And it'll probably give you a heads up that the rally is starting. But we need to close above minus 10 on both those indicators. So when will that happen? Don't know. Um, So just whenever it it starts to turn up, uh, it could be another few days could be another actually you know maybe a couple of weeks or so don't know right. usually september october is seasonality wise is bullish for gold and gold stocks and so we're not really a long ways from that you know a couple of weeks or so and we'll be there so it could be first part of september don't know but as long as those both those indicators remain above minus 10 the uptrend should continue so how long those two indicators will be above, to, I don't know, uh, it could be a couple of months, could be a couple of weeks. It, it, it depends on on um, what GDX wants to do. So this is a little bit different. I've, I've kind of figured out these type of indicators, I don't know, about a couple of years ago. And I've kind of been honing in on them and working on them. And they really work well, but they, they give decent buy and sell signals. But right now, uh, they're, the 50-day average and the... Uh, 18-day averages of these indicators at the moment are still on sell signals, but they're giving positive divergence. So, Do you see um, any, you know, China's having some issues with, you know, their economy and uh, that area of Asia is a, is a massive consumer of gold worldwide, um, even just like, you know, on a, on a simple, you know, citizen basis, right? With the issues okay. that they're having their economy and kind of decreased spending that you're, they're seeing over there, do you see a longer term kind of, you know, maybe price downtrend with gold because of that? Or what, do you have any thoughts regarding that? Well, as far as gold, I, I think it's actually it's still going to keep going up. Um, okay. And gold's way outperformed uh, the gold stocks. If you look at the XAU to gold ratio, you know, the gold ratio has been hovering around this range for a low range for a number of years. And, you know, for some reason, people are not coming back. They're coming into gold, but they're not coming back into the gold stocks. Sure. So, and gold stocks has always been cyclical. Um, they run up and they run back down. And um, I don't know how to, you know, what China's got to do with it right now, but uh, there doesn't seem to be a bit other than a, a, a trade that may last two, three, four months in the gold stocks. You know, the uptrend on, on a bigger time frame, I don't think has started yet. And I don't know when, um, where we had a big rally, you know, in 2000, all the way in 2011, gold stocks went through the roof. A lot of stocks were in the penny stocks that turned into, you know, Twenty thirty dollar stocks. Right. And I think at some point that's going to happen again, and we may be in the process of building that base where that base may start. But I can't say when when that will happen, but I think it's still in front of us. Wonderful. Well, well Tim, thank you so much for joining us today. That was uh, that whole thing was great. And folks, we will have these charts in the den. If you're not in there yet, you should get in it. Uh, Tim, thank you so much for joining us today. All right. Thank you for having me. Okay. Take care now. 
Folks, stay tuned. We're about to wrap up the show in this next short segment, and we'll be right back. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. And guys, if you enjoyed that interview with uh, Tim Ord, and again, he's always awesome to have on, you should visit Ord-Oracle.com. Flash it very quickly. And really, he's just, uh, anytime I've spoken with him, um, he has always taught me so much, especially as I'm, you know, a younger guy and, and really starting to wrap my head around much more trading and, and kind of all the dynamics in the market. All right. I want to take a look at Toll. We had a bad day today, obviously, with it, but I want to pull through this uh, article here. And essentially, the home builders are doing quite well, <laughs> with all things considered. You take a look at this home builders rise. This bottom line here, uh, this chart is the S&P 500 index. And this is really how uh, these other um, home builders are really just outperforming it in, in, in a major way, quite a bit. About three quarters of US homeowners have mortgages charging less than 4% interest. Uh, new loans last week averaged uh, seven, six, uh, excuse me, 7.16% matching levels last seen in 2001. And this is uh, the quote here, bottom line, supply is short and demand is returning to affordable offerings and uh, builders will need to produce more homes to fill the void. You can see here this immense run up in, uh, in home prices starting from 2020. Again, this is this kind of post uh, pandemic era or, you know, in the midst of it as well. 
you can see really from the toll starting at about, you know, what, 54 bucks at this 55 line, a little bit below in the beginning of the year, going all the way up, reaching a high of 83.72. Of course, we had a down day to day, but um, we'll see how that shakes out on the long end. That's on, you know, not significant volume uh, by any means whatsoever. All right, um, you know, I love doing some science stuff. I say that every time. This one's interesting and perhaps one of the more uh, most Italian studies I've ever seen is uh, eating their pizza. And again, that has to do with, you know, non-poly uh, unsaturated fatty acids, but pizza consumption can actually improve diseases like rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, this probably has to do with um, high quality cheese and eating olive oil. I will link that. Uh, what a wonderful study. Folks, thank you so much for joining me. I will be back with you tomorrow, and Tom will be back Monday.